there's some question and I think some really interesting conversation to be had about to what extent um, is the goal to bring people with different politics together in a congregation versus to um, kind of catechize or form people in a certain sort of political way, um, a way of inhabiting, you know, the, the wider society as well as the local church. So um, I just open that up. I'm, I'm curious how you all think about what your goal is. Do you, do you want to have, I mean, people talk about a purple church or people talk about, right. And so is that the goal is, is, is something else? How do you think about that? I, I will say right now, I, if, the fact that we as United Methodists who have traditionally held a very broad tent theologically, mm. right? I love mm. that I can read scripture, but because we use tradition, experience, and reason, my grounding can be as faithful as someone else's who differs from me, mm. and we can find our oneness in the body of Christ. I, I find that the fact that we're now splitting, it really concerns me about the witness we can make in a highly divided world. What can we say about the unity of Christ when we can't even be in the same pew anymore? And Bishop Karen, I I think one of the questions that um, that comes up for me when I hear you say that that I've I've really grappled with um, for the past few years is is what happens when we actually get into the question of um, who bears the burden of unity in mm-hmm. congregational settings. Um, because I think when we we do this sort of deeper analysis, um, especially when we're talking so much about, you know, in in the case of the United Methodist Church, LGBTQ people who have been uh, who have been marginalized in in uh, in the, in all of our denominations, who have worked and waited patiently and are told to wait patiently, um, what what does it what do, what kind of unity right are we asking for? Um, if we continue to cultivate churches where LGBTQ people don't feel like their children are supported, where they can't get married, where they can't um, get ordained. Um, and so, I, you know, I, there have also been Mennonite churches that have left um, because of congregations following the work of the spirit in regards to LGBTQ people. Um, women, we had an exodus of churches when women were ordained in the Mennonite church. Um, and we were patient in ways that were painful and actually self-destructive at times. Um, and so I'm just aware that unity comes at a price tag for, for certain people in our congregations that it doesn't for others, right? Um, saying, well, we, we're, we need to create a place where people who are anti-immigration and immigrants sit together. Um, and and I, wanted, I, I, I just want us to take seriously that that is a cost. We're asking people to bear a cost. Um, and that cost is borne disproportionately by people who have power in our congregations and those who don't. Um, and so I'm, I'm just curious how you are working through that um, um, because I also hold this deep desire for unity um, and a strong sense of the need for our churches to be home for people who out there in the world feels like a constant sense of violation and intimidation. Melissa, you raised some great issues and I'm not asking for people on the margins to bear the brunt of unity, but I think unity is different from uniformity. And, you know, certainly I, you know, I bear the scars on my body and my soul Mm. living in a church that, that has official official policy that people like me are not welcomed. But it's only by being in relationship. Mm. I am transformed as well as the the person I'm in relationship with. And how do we grow in our understanding? I mean, we grow together. I don't have them. I don't have the right answer, right? I know what is true in my body, in my soul, in my mind. Um, But that truth enlarges in relationship with people who are different from me, when I can offer them the dignity, love, and respect that I want. And and there is trans, the Holy Spirit comes in, right? And and we're all taken to a place we didn't intend to go. 